Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, my name is Rahat Kazmi. Just give you a little background. Uh, I'm actually an accountant by profession and have been working as corporate trainer and lecturer in higher education in UK. Uh, corporate training wise, I travel most of the Middle East and I train people in business, accounting, and finance. So I've done this lecture uh, before a few times, uh, training some lectures and other some professionals, but you know, hopefully it should be able to help uh, some people here as well. Some uh, teachers who are dedicated the time to teach uh, students here in MUS. The topic today is learner engagement, and I've been told that we have we don't have enough time because of uh, Zohar, but we'll try to do as as quick as we can, try to make some sense at the same time. Okay. Uh, so, guys, I would not cover the whole skipping now. Skipping is general. You know, basically, if somebody wants to ask a question, please, you know, simply. Raise your hand or talk to me instead of don't wait for me to sort of you know uh, look through the text messages because we only got limited time. So if you had a question, just simply stop me and ask a question. I'll be very happy to come back to you. Okay, and of course, in, in case you have any anybody needs for the toilet, please you know simply go there and come back and please keep your mobile phones on silent if you don't mind. Topic we'll cover today is first of all is. Uh, what is learner engagement in the real world? Uh, be a strategic learning advisor. Create learning athletes. Uh, this is actually a very important concept. I'll go through it and explain to everyone. Then it'll be for, uh, for mentors, for trainers, teachers. Refuel, recharge, and refresh your mind. The next topic is uh, passive versus active learning. Then uh, we got uh, engagement strategies for learners understanding knowledge and respecting your students, being passionate and enthusiastic, incorporating technology into mix, encouraging active learning and critical thinking, connecting to the real, uh, to the world outside of academia. These are topics and I will go through briefly with them and then hopefully uh, it'll all make sense to some, a lot of you, or all of you hopefully. Okay, first of all, we got the learner engagement in the real world. If you look at the picture here guys, you see that picture, uh, first one, we've got a picture here of heart and mind, okay? If you're not providing learning experiences which connect to people's heart and mind, you're really wasting your time and wasting their time as well. We need to make sure that we uh, sort of, you know, engage people through their hearts and mind. People like what you're saying to them. People sort of love what you're saying to them. They understand it and they love it. Be inspired and feel empowered to engage your learners. No lecturer, no trainer, no teacher can engage anyone or motivate anyone. If you're not motivated or inspired yourself, you have to be motivated by yourself before you can inspire or motivate other people. The sectional moments have also changed uh, from, you know, there was a time when we were in schools and colleges at that time. We had one class full of 30, 40 students maybe, and that was one too many. But these days, you know, we have choices there. We can have uh, learning, one-to-one, -one. experiential learning, on demand, self pays so We have so many different ways of learning. So, you know, things have changed. So we have to work accordingly as technology is. Instead of thinking about how have done things in the past, a lot of people say to you, I've been teaching lecturing for 30 years. I have done this and that. Fine, fair enough, that's very good. We must think now, okay, we try a lot of things. What we have not tried, anything we have not tried, let's try that, see if that works better than what we have done before. Your learners are your audience and they have, they're looking for experiences. We need to make sure when we teach people, when we train people, when we mentor them, we create some learning experiences for them. We create some memorable moments for them, okay? Then we need to make sure, you know, when I was in school, in college, I don't remember everything, okay? Everything, everything teacher said, I remember two things, a few, few uh, teachers and lectures. Uh, for example, one teacher when I was doing BSc in mathematics, one student, a teacher said to us, he said, when you are reading a book, read the book from, let's say, from the start of the, of the page where the author's name is, the book's name is, and go to the end of the page, end of the book where the price of the book is, and read everything. If you want to learn properly, read everything. Don't miss anything at all. Don't do selective study because then you will not gain the proper knowledge. So still remember that I always teach my, my students as well, my learners as well. If you want to learn something precisely, go through everything. Don't skip anything at all. And one of the teachers said to us, you know, he said to us, you know, when you want to uh, learn something, learn something by writing it, writing it down, 
by writing into headings and subheadings. I still remember that because those are, you know, those teachers have, did create for me the memorable moments in school and college. I forgot the rest of it, okay? It's been a long time, but I forgot the rest of it, but you know, those things I still remember. We need to make sure we create those moments for our students, uh, either it could be MUS or it could be, you know, in your professional life where you teach and train. Okay, consider the concept of the boom in your next teaching. When you prepare next teaching lessons or in lesson plans, try to create some boom moments in them. So basically they can create a boom environment for students, okay? They can basically uh, create some memorable moments for your, for, your, for your students. So they can they can remember, they can remember for the civil lives, okay? Like I gave you two examples of two teachers, one from the school, one from the college, okay? I still remember them since a long time ago. So we need to create that boom moment for our students in the next lesson we have. Okay, next topic is Kaya, be a strategic learning advisor. Okay, we need to think ahead. We need to think in the long term, think out of the box. We need to create that environment that people, everyone like us can think out of the box and think ahead. We need to attract and retain learner talent. We need to make sure, let's say we're trying to create a brand of MUS learning. So in MUS, we need to attract more, more students. Everybody can, can, can hear good stories about, about teaching and, and, and learning. They come to us and then we create the talent and retain the talent, okay? We need to develop people's capabilities. We need to sort of have an action plan. Where when people started, what did they learn already, what they already knew, and what they have done after they finished. So this is basically trying to build on capabilities, trying to fill the gaps they have, okay? What they, when they started, what the knowledge and skill they, they came with, and when they left, what they what, what capabilities, what skills they left with it, okay? Then we need to create those capabilities to make sure that we have done our job properly. Create a value-based culture. We need to make sure every time we spend some time, it creates value. It just doesn't waste time. We just don't look at the watch and say, okay, we started this time, finish this time, start time, end time. We need to look at focus on creating some value, okay? Build an employer brand. In this case, our employer brand would be MUS. We need to make sure that we, uh, we give service in such a way that people, you know, they're inspired by it. They, they tell more people about it, okay? The word of mouth can really be great, okay? We need to motivate and engage learners. We need to make sure we need to motivate our students. We can only motivate our students if, if we are motivated and learners and you know, engage learners ourselves. Because for a teacher, for a lecturer, for a trainer, learning never stops, it goes on. You know? For example, if I'm asked to do a corporate training course next week, I have to learn this course, first of all, to a, that high level. Then I can go and teach people as, as well. Okay? So if you are a teacher, you have to keep learning yourself. So we need to be really active, engaged learners and we should be motivated ourselves, then we can pass on the same passion to our students. People listen, you know, if you have any question, please, okay, stop me anytime, don't be shy, okay? Just, you know, talk to me whenever you like, okay? Next one, guys, this topic is very important. I think, I think this is most valuable. We need to create learning athletes. This is a you know, concept of creating athletes. You know, when you see athletes, they don't just show up to the competition. They work day and night. Okay, they work for let's say go into quarterfinals. It's, then they work very hard to go into semifinal and final. Some become champions. Some win awards. Okay, this is not only you know this doesn't go without working very very hard, extremely hard. They need to maybe set a world record for example. Okay, so we need to create the same atmosphere for our learners. We need to create them learning at least so they can work extra hard, work that hard. They can show that much of passion. When they learn with us, okay, then they see then the only when they can really make a difference in their own lives, okay, in the life of our brand as well. One more thing, okay, is focusing on micro learning. Courses are great, but videos work as well. We need to make sure that when we create our lessons, they should have a lot of things in them, okay, because everyone learns differently. If we just have lecture only, uh, no pictures, no videos, okay, then of course people will, some people will not be able to get as much as they should. So we need to create, you know, some kind of learning aspect for everyone, some kind of interest in learning for everyone. So videos can make good sense. Pictures, sometimes they can translate the text into, you know, an idea straight away. Uh, pictures can make your learning quite fast. Last thing, okay, is the, we have to be consistent. We need to be, we need to show consistency. Let's say we tried one technique of teaching or learning. We can't cheat, cheat, uh, change our technique the following week to a different one and the following week to a different one. Because when people are trying, when they like our technique, they like us to stay consistent as well. So they can learn from us, you know, they can 
Otherwise, we'll just simply be confusing them if you keep changing techniques every single week, every single month. You don't give yourself whiplash or your learners by, uh, by pivoting from tactic to tactic. We need to make sure you know that we, we tried the technique, we tried it fully, completely, we give it some you know, variable time before we can basically you know, go on to the next one. All right. Uh, brain maps, learning, and habits. We need to make sure we, everybody has a brain map. We need to make sure that we can try to understand brain map for students, okay? Brain map, of what are they learning? What did they learn before? We need to connect what they learned previously to the what they're going to learn next week, okay? The following week and following lesson. We need to create the learning habits, okay? This is very important that we need to make sure people get into habit of learning. They sort of, you know, they do things, you know, as a default instead of, you know, just working very hard for it. Okay, we can talk about a small uh, learning model here called Oscar. It's very well used, you know, in uh, corporate training and other, you know, uh, top universities. Uh, basically, what this Oscar means is outcome, situation, choices, and consequences, actions, and the view. Outcome basically stands for help learners to clarify their outcome. Basically, you know, uh, th there's one word used called WIIFM. It's not the name of a radio session, guys. Basically means what's in it for me. What's in it for me basically means you know students need to know. They will ask you question. Why should I learn this? What will I, what will be outcome? What will the result of it? So need to explain to students, clarify what the outcome of learning will be. Once they understand it, of course their motivation, their engagement will go up. Situation will be established where the learner is now. We need to understand their learning gap, their their gap, you know, their map of learning, where they know, where you want to take them. It is very important. That's that's called situation. We need to understand the situation and make clear the students also understand what the situation is. Then we have choices and consequences. Help learners generate as many choices as possible and highlight consequences to each potential choice. We need to tell them if they select choice number one, there'll be consequences to that. Choice number two have another different consequence. It could be positive consequences and negative consequences. We need to make sure we explain to them what the choices or consequences are. Next, next, next one is we have actions, help the learners establish their next steps and encourage responsibility for each their action plan. So basically we need, we need to make sure we let students into thinking model of you know, thinking out of the box so they can see exactly what this, if we do this you now in little time later, a long time later, this will happen, okay? They need to have, every action will have some kind of, you know, some, every action we take no, it has some different kind of results later on. So we had to have action plan accordingly. Next one is review. Create an ongoing dialogue of review and evaluation. The learners continuously checking that they are on course. We need to make sure we review their progress and students themselves they review their progress as well. If they're old enough to do that, you know, make sure that we 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 can see that they are on track. What they're supposed to do, what they you know the whole uh, objective was to learn. They are still doing the same thing. They're still on the right track. They're not gone sidetracked. Okay. This is basically the view. So Oscar basically is uh, outcome, situation, choice and consequence, situation, uh, action, and the view. Let's move on. Okay. This is also, guys, uh, it might make some, some humorous sense as well, but of course, it's uh, worked very well for me when I go talk to people and ask them to refuel, recharge, and refresh your mind. Let me start with example, guys. Okay. If you have a car which has a dead battery, you can't uh, charge the battery with another dead battery. You need to bring fully charged battery to charge uh, a dead battery. So basically here, when we come to refuel, recharge, refresh basically means you know, that we as, as, a, as a trainers, as teachers, as mentors, we have to refuel ourselves, we have to recharge ourselves, we have to refresh our mind. We need to get, we need to get the fresh knowledge set of skills before we go and teach other people. If we don't do that, it would make them, it would make those learners absolutely boring, boring, as they call it. They will lose steam by the second. We need to make sure we bring in new ideas, new knowledge, okay? Because, you know, if we have empty tanks ourselves, if, if we are, if we own our, ourselves our dead batteries, we can't charge dead batteries. We need to make sure we are either full of tanks, okay? Or we have refueled, the old fuel, old fuel is gone, and re, we put the new fuel in, okay, new knowledge in, new, tech, new techniques, new skills in, so we can make sure that our learners can learn from us and they can keep 
uh, creating the bo those boom moments. Okay. All right. So I encourage you guys to commit to four out outgoing practices. First one will be engage your network. Network head, it not only students, also network will also be of fellow uh, mentors, fellow lecturers, teachers, trainers, okay, in your network, because we learn from each other guys on daily basis. I always tell my learners on whenever I meet with them, okay, none of us, for example, let's say in this, in this uh, session today, we get 2021 people, because none of us knows more than all of us. We all have knowledge, which we all have knowledge, you know, this, this knowledge, which is technical knowledge, it's much more than all of us, okay? None, none of us has as much knowledge as all of us. So we all learn from each other. We all, when we keep engaged with the network, we learn from each other. Bet on yourself. We need to make sure, guys, that we trust each other. We treat each, each ourselves like a brand, okay? That means betting yourself that we don't undervalue yourself, okay? Don't make sure that you, you're confident, uh, you're self-motivated, and then build your toolkit. Basically, what this means is, Okay, build your skill set, build your knowledge, get more ideas, get more education, get more sort of you know, knowledge, go and share. And guys, finally, fill your tank. Any questions so far, guys? Ladies and gentlemen, any questions so far? I have a question. Um, in the, uh, if you're saying you need to create athlete learners, uh, mm -hmm. athletes, uh, do, doesn't it make a child competitive because the uh, world is already getting so competitive and you know it's it, it the will it not give it um it and uh, um uh, I mean uh, the children will have an idea of competition in their minds, right? Will it not be like um uh, will it be good for them like? the competition thing i don't know i feel it's okay, okay. Of, uh... all right thank you Ms. Ali. listen uh, first of all why should we not make uh, make it competitive because this 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 whole world is competitive we need to make sure we can compete we can compete in all competitions okay but the kids should learn this from beginning because you know life has become more tough okay i'm i'm actually in a quantum profession but no we have artificial intelligence and i'm already feeling you know that under threat because i have to work extra hard now be with artificial intelligence so we need to make sure when we talk about athletes basically means an athlete is not really somebody who can just wake up in the morning and say okay i'm going to go into marathon they need to practice a lot they need to work very hard to go and win those those competitions so we need to make sure every student has the same approach athletic approach they keep you know they sort of work in a system a procedure a process you know then they have to learn that much that much so i would say it will work better for everyone okay if we keep kids you know uh, competitive from very beginning, then they will not feel any difference later on. They'll get used to it. Thank you, Ms. Ali. Does that answer your question? Anybody else? Uh, uh, brother, oh, sorry, please sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. please. Okay. Please go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask you that you said we shouldn't be engaging the heart and mind. So what is it that we're engaging then? I said we should be engaging heart and mind. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank with, you. No, no, that's fine. Without heart and mind, we can't win anything. We will we'll be wasting our time and students' time as well. Every time we teach something, we have to teach them with the heart and mind. Students should have their heart they want to learn themselves, okay? And mind that they are grabbing everything. Every time we teach something, they're grabbing it. Anybody else, guys? I have uh, uh, the learning athlete. I, the way I understand it is that it it is uh, not, uh, yeah, I'm like, it is, not about competition so much, but it is like the way they train themselves. That they, uh, like an athlete, I'm just right now on a website and it, and it gives a model of how they train. And it is like the, they first have a vision, then they plan for it, how to do, how to do the, uh, how to do the training. And then they, they do that exercise and at the end they reflect. So in the, in the same in the same way that the learn like an athlete, the model is the given is like a vision, plan, learn and reflect. So I think I think you are what you are what you are talking in that learning athlete is 
give the respective hours for learning because okay. without respective hours it will not result in learning uh, learning uh, as much okay so you doesn't thank I, you for am that am i correct am i correct oh, so you doesn't thank you very much uh, because you made a very good point there what i was going to say was at learning athletes we need to create build and build people's habits in such a way it becomes our second nature we don't need to think about it no we need to we need to build the habits in such a way they are training like athletes not really you know become athletes but learning athletes are that they they know exactly what they're supposed to do as a habit as going along and of course when they think like an athlete as a learner they will become much better learners that's the whole approach okay anybody else guys before we move on i have two uh, two further questions which i put in the chat okay one is that what is the boom moment the second one is when you mentioned the brain maps are you mentioning uh, mind maps okay first one let's go to the first one boom moment okay i don't know if you know shahid afridi in pakistan shahid afridi uh, was a pakistani cricketer i think he retired now every he, his nickname was boom boom afridi because every time he played cricket he created boom moment for them Similarly, in Javed Miyadad was uh, a cricket captain as well. There's one match in, I think, UAE. He was, I think, Pakistan team needed 30 and more than 30 runs to win. He only had one last over left. He managed to score six in every single, every single ball he played in the last over, and Pakistan team won. So we need to make sure that we create some moments for students. You know, they, we need to create some knowledge which somebody who doesn't know exactly what they already know, uh, and then they, that brings, that comes out of them. For example, let me give you one small example here. I worked with uh, a night porter. I worked for a large hotel in London uh, back in the early 90s. This porter, he was uh, very obnoxious, very arrogant. He used to use F words and Hoover, F word carpet. Everything was for him F word. No one liked him very much because he was very, you know, sort of arrogant. He was very rude to everyone. He was uh, not properly dressed all the time. Shirt has spots everywhere. Hair was quite you know, scruffy. One day he says to me, no one wants to train me. I said, why should they train you? I think you'd like to stay a porter for the rest of your life. No, no, I don't want to like to stay a porter. In that case, why don't we start something? So I said, you know, if you can stop swearing, I can teach and train you. I was his manager. So basically what we did was, we put a, you know, a little ball on the, on the desk, with every time you swear, you put 50p in the ball. First evening, we made 32 pounds from his tips. All night teams, you know, they had tea and coffees, hot chocolates from his money from his trips. So second day, it went down to, I think, 20 pounds or something. After one week, zero. Every time he wants to swear, he'll put hand on his mouth and stop himself. Later on, this guy, I went and started teaching him and training him. Following week, he came back with a nice suit on. He had a nice haircut. He looked like a different person. I didn't recognize him as first. I said, hold on, who's this person? Oh, yes, this, this guy Richard. So when I left the job, they promoted him in my position. They asked me, is he ready? Yes, he's ready. So we need to create you need to bring something out from people which they don't already know. We need to set up, you know, see potential in someone and bring that out. So, CSNK, please let me know the second question. I forgot what the second question was. Mind maps, are the brain maps, you mean mind maps, or these are different? Yeah, mind and brain is the same thing, okay? Uh, basically, we need to make sure that they have room for everything. Like, for example, let's say degree students, uh, students who are doing degrees, they have to learn mathematics, they have to learn HR and everything, so they understand, basically this is all practical life. So they need to understand every single thing. So they need to make spaces, you know, shelves everywhere in the mind or in the brain where everything will be absorbed and learned. Okay, let, uh, I need to move on now. And I'll ask a uh, question then because I need to only have eight minutes left now. Next one, guys, we have passive versus active learning. Uh, why not just lecture, okay? Guys, you know, we, I know when we were learning, at that time we had just lectures. So a lot of, lot of students in my, our classes, they didn't go ahead because they didn't really work hard themselves. People who you are you know, in professional capabilities know, just you know, tap yourself on the back because you have worked very, very hard by yourself because if you have not created different learning activities yourself, learning techniques yourself, you have not been here as you, where you are now, okay? Because at that time, we had just, learned, just lectures. But these days, just lectures are not enough. We need to have some activities in class, we need to uh, engage people, you know, in role playing and everything. So guys, learners need to be engaged, active, engaged, challenged, and purpose driven. So if you don't challenge your, your learners, don't ask them questions, don't put them in spot, don't get them engaged, don't make them active, 
Okay, then of course we won't achieve our, our objective. The value of engaged learner, guys. Can you imagine if student is engaged in class, a one student is totally totally unengaged? Can you imagine you know what the difference will be when time comes for assessment? Engaged students will have no problem going through it. They will know they will go with flying colors. But students who was not engaged, they will have to you know at that time they will go under pressure. You know, in universities there in the UK, because I teach in about three, four universities at the same time as well with as this lecture. So students, last students who can't get their, their work done, they pay people to do the assignments for them. They spend lots of money. Every single assessment, every single assignment, every single set of semester, they pay people to do the assignments because they had they didn't part, uh, take part in learning at the time. They didn't get engaged in classes and they can't do the work. People, one very okay, uh, commonly used practice is uh, the coronal method of notes taking. This is very important. Basically, if you look at the picture on the right hand side, uh, first of all, I have the title here, what the topic is for today, write the date, okay? It could be lecture name, it could be class name. Then write down, if students can write down the keywords, keywords they're listening in the lecture, they write the keywords. And then also the second part of this, of the same page will be going through questions. Any questions they might have in mind because one question comes to mind, later you forget about question. But if you write it down, when lecture ends, when class finishes, you ask each other the first question. And then of course, at the bottom, you should summarize what you learned today in one session, okay? Summarizing will basically, will be very important. At that time when you summarize, you have fresh knowledge, you can remember everything. And later on when you're trying to revise it, you simply go through your coronal notes and everything will come clear to you. It's your own writing, okay? So guys, this, uh, if you have not tried it before, please try this, uh, you know, the coronal method of notes. It works very well. I tried in uh, corporate training and also lecturing as well. For me, it works wonders. Okay, guys, next one. Let's guys uh, introduce the uh, model of AD. AD model, guys, is very, very uh, famous, used in uh, industry everywhere, okay? And uh, especially in, in uh, famous universities and corporate training environment. So AD basically stands for analysis, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. Analysis basically means we need to make sure that we uh, have systematic exploration of the way things are and the way things should be. So we need to see exactly where, where the students are, where they should be. We need to look at the performance gap. And then when we can analyze that, next step will be to design based on analysis, okay? The design of our, of our materials in such a way to cover that performance gap, okay? And following we have is developed using the information gathered in analysis and design. We need to basically uh, design solutions for performance gap. And next one will be implement. This stage includes delivery of the performance solution. So we basically, you know, whether we have uh, an analyzed, we designed the learning on that, and we developed, you know, the solution for that. And we need to, this is time to evaluate, to implement that, to put that into action. And following that, we'll have evaluate. Evaluate basically means we need to make sure have we achieved the, the objective which we had? Did we achieve those, you know, learning gaps or not? What we sort of basically had planned? Is it working for us or not? Did we achieve all the learning objectives we had? Did we fill the performance gap we had or not? And then, of course, we can go back again. This is like a cycle, okay? Analysis, design, develop, implement, and evaluate. This is simply, guys, keep in mind, ADD, A-D-D-I-E model. Okay. Engagement strategies for learners. First of all, guys, this is you know, the simple points I put here. We'll talk briefly about them. Uh, Problem-based learning. We need to give students some problems, okay? Let's say we can talk about some case study and ask them, okay, here, the study was here, this was going on, and what can you do about it? If they can solve a case study, and then of course that, they, then they are trying to uh, go into practice of uh, problem, problem solving while they're students, while they're learning. Use index cards are very common, you know, these things, you know, for example, uh, even in accountancy, AAT, ACA, CCA, SEMA, et cetera, so they all use index cards, which are used for revisions. Think, pair, and share, guys. Think, pair, and share. We need to put people in groups so they can think like a group think, and then, of course, they can apply, they can share the knowledge with each other. This is a very fast way of learning it. Uh, leverage flip charts, guys. We can create people in, put people in groups, and they can work in different flip charts. They can take one page, one page of flip chart, uh, A3 page, and then, of course, they can start uh, putting their ideas through. And then summarizing, guys, is very important. When we ask students in class to summarize what they learned today, let's say we covered one topic, one page, ask one student to summarize what I said to you. And if the test student can summarize, next student can summarize, of course, the concept will be very clear to all the students in class. 
role playing. A role playing is very important. You know, let's say we uh, in corporate training we do this a lot. Let's say customer and uh, a buyer, uh, customer buyer, or maybe you know uh, a shopkeeper. Uh, let's say we're working as you know in a hotel. So a hotel manager, and of course a customer comes in to check in. So these are role playing uh, techniques which can you know sort of bring practical experience. Student presentations. Let's say you finish one module or moment. Okay, let's say you finish one topic. Uh, you spend three months you know, covering one, some topic. And when this all semester is over, module is over, you take one topic each and give one student to talk about that for nearly, let's say, five minutes or 10 minutes. So give different topics to different students. So in this way, they can all cover the whole module you covered already, okay? So basically then, apart from your teaching to them, they're learning from, learning from peers, peers as well, okay? They're learning from peers and they're learning from what they said as well. So of course, everyone will, work very hard not to embarrass himself, okay? It's just basically a simple thing. If students are shy to talk, to present themselves first, first of all, ask them to present about anything at all. They can present about their pet, for example, they can present about their favorite city, favorite game, etc. Once they get into, you know, sort of, uh, confidence, of course, at that time, you can ask them to present their learning topic. And then guys, we have content recall activities. Let's see in this way. We can talk about you know uh, what we covered last week. If students can recall that, or you can recall in the beginning, then ask somebody else to recover that as well. So they can, if they can recall what they learned last time, and connect what they're going to learn today and then in future. So of course, this is basically all setting places in their in their mind map. Okay. Then guys, we have to create simulations. Simulations are letting you example of let's say MBS building where we have we have a fire drill every Monday morning. We like to make sure you know the when fire alarm rings. Everyone gathers at a meeting point. Fire masters are wearing, you know, this uh, uh, yellow jackets, and they have microphones in their hand. They bring everyone to meeting point. And one person goes to investigate where the error was coming from, where the fire, which zone the fire is from. So this basically is to prepare yourself for real situations. Then people let's, next we have blogs. We can ask, encourage students if they are old enough to write blogs or read blogs, go into wikis and use collaborative work. You know, I know it's been very tough during uh, the COVID-19. Most people have been learning online, uh, so people can't really get in groups, guys, but I can tell you that WhatsApp has a capacity of eight people, you know, they can do a conference call, a free conference call, video or voice conference call. So we can ask students to work in groups of WhatsApp, create, you know, they can have their own groups, but create a WhatsApp group. So they can basically, when you give them an activity, if they're not all sitting together, they can still you know, have collaboration. They still can work together. I think, guys, uh, my time is up now because it's just that I have more slides, but inshallah, we'll cover that another time. But I think it's over time very soon. Any question before we go? Sorry, sorry to... brother. Sorry, brother. I thought you had until 10 past 1. So it's uh, 10 past 12. So you oh, have one past... more oh, okay. Ten... <laughs> okay. In that case, that's fine. Thank <laughs> Probably you. that's why you were uh, hurrying up to us. Sorry if there was any confusion. Right. No, we changed your slot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we uh, as you were not available in the beginning. Okay. So, uh, you, you can you can carry on until all right. That's the time. That's what we, we just... Sure, sure. Okay, I don't yeah, think you'll take, go to the time, time because I, I went a bit fast, but you know, let's see how far it goes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, next one is understanding, knowing, and respecting your students. Because this is very important. Okay, uh, respect you know is. Uh, very important, we can't just, okay, because we are professionals, we have more knowledge, we have more sort of status in society. It doesn't mean our students, you know, they should be totally ignored, they should not be respected. We need to understand your learners. We need to know exactly what the learners are. We need to understand. If you don't understand your learners, basically, you can't teach them properly. Uh, every single student in your class, we should know, we should get to know every single one, okay? Talk to them, maybe have one-to-one -one with them. And ask them questions about what they already know, what they want to learn, what they want to get out of it. You know, ask their preferences. Right, right. Make make notes about them. Of course, then first of all, they'll open up to you in one or two sessions. Uh, and then of course, once we understand them better, we can prepare better strategies for for teaching them. Barriers to understanding your learners. Okay, there could be some barriers. Like uh, earlier on, uh, lady a lady asked question about if the students are very shy. Okay, so we, guys, we we all very different. Okay, some some students. We'll be shy, of course. Some students be very confident. We need to make sure that we can make the shy people unshy, okay, by you know getting them more involved. I once uh, went to teach a uh, key lecture, uh, well, training session of communication skills in Saudi Arabia. So they said to me, uh, "We have uh, some culture issues, Mr. Kazmi. What's culture issues? Oh, we got some ladies in groups as well. 
Okay, that's fine. I was born in Pakistan, so we, that's fine. We, I know, understand the cultural issues. Don't worry at all. Everything will be fine. So one session was supervisors, one was managers. So again, same topic, you know, but I had to uh, that I would custom make this uh, training of communication skills at this at the level. So when because I was I was from UK, I had treated everyone exactly the same way. Respect to ladies, respect to gents. I treated everyone exactly the same. So when ladies realized I'm, I'm giving you lots of respect, they all spoke up and they were so smart, so sharp. They asked me so many questions and you know, they opened up and by lunchtime, only ladies were talking and men were just shy and ladies were just taking part. So at the end of the day, when basically what happened was I actually told them my feedback was, ladies, you know, they are very clever, they're very smart, but they, they lack empowerment. Every time you ask them a question, how would you do it? Uh, I'll ask the manager, sir. But you already know the answer. I still ask my manager, sir, why you still ask your manager? Because I, I told the company, you know, ladies are very smart, but you need to give them some empowerment, some confidence, okay? So simply, when students are shy, we need to empower them a little. We need to sort of talk about the, the thing which they basically will find more interesting. So respecting students, guys, it's very important. It's just, you know, if we don't respect students, we won't get respect back. Respect, you know, comes with respect. We need to make sure we get them you know, of course, I talk to my, my students, I usually call them Mr. or Miss, no even. No, you just said this help. And then, of course, when students call me Mr. Mr. Kazmi, I usually tell them, okay, just call me Rahati. It's okay. Rahati is fine. Don't call me Mr. Kazmi. So then it becomes into the you know, more, you know, sort of formalities. Uh, strive to make yourself approachable and accessible to your learners. So basically, we should be, we, sh we should have such pace of teaching and learning. Uh, which is such a point that everyone knows that they can talk to us, they can talk to us and ask us any question, they can you know, come to us anytime they need help, anytime they question, they can come talk to us. This should be our approach. Be a consumer professional with includes thinking and dressing professionally. Uh, if we're going to present ourselves as professionals, we have to act professional, we have to dress like professionals too, this will make a big difference, guys. Please believe me, I know that now for fact. If you go up, you know, dress up, you know, in baggy jeans to, to work, uh, our baggage, uh, track suits, bottoms, and with, you know, all the, you know, maybe uh, different, you know, sort of uh, strange dressing up coats. Uh, students will laugh at you. Once I was working at uh, Sheraton Heathrow Airport, and we had one receptionist. One morning, she come to work with bright red hair. We had to send her back because we couldn't have people, you know, going through a near reception and looking at her, you know, what she looks what she, what she look like. So we had to send her back, ask her to go back, change her hair, hair, hair again, you know, we just said, this look totally unprofessional and out of touch here. We need to make sure that we act professional, we dress like professionals. This will make a big difference, guys. Please believe me that I've tried it and it works very well. Be transparent and flexible. Okay, flexibility basically shows they know that if some, someone asks you to stay behind our class, ask a question, answer a question, we should do that. Answer the email, reply back to them. Okay, transparent, everything is clear. We need to tell them what the learning objectives are to start with. Okay, what we're going to teach them. Uh, and at the end of the end of the day, students should go through. They should know exactly where the topic is starting from, where it will end. Okay, just when we have transparency there, everything will be clear. People don't want to learn when they're not clear about what they are going to learn, what they can achieve. Okay, when everything is clear to them, and the whole map is clear to them, this is where we start. This is where we go. Uh, take a break here. This is end the point. Of course, in that in that way, it'll make more sense to everyone. Okay. Being passionate and enthusiastic, conveying your passion for teaching. Guys, passion for teaching, what you know, we, if a student realizes you're a passionate teacher, you're a passionate trainer, I can, I can tell you guys from my own, own experience, people will really listen to you. They'll take every single word you say to them, okay? Uh, I'll give you one small example here, okay? Uh, when I was learning Urdu in Pakistan, uh, doing my degree, we had, uh, uh, for the teacher, his name, his name was Abdul Wahid. So the strategy was, okay, Abdul Wahid, when he came to study in England, his mother got uh, his, his uh, girlfriend, a lady he wanted to marry to his older brother. So when he came back to Pakistan at that time, he was very upset, very sad, because of course the lady he wanted to marry, he got married to his brother, he became his you no know, sister-in-law instead of you know, his own wife. Uh, other day, someone shared some joke with me. The joke was basically, if, you, if, a, if a poet marries a lady and if the wife is very good, life will be great. If wife is not very good, poetry will be great. So what it was basically, when this teacher will translate, 
you know, the poetry of, let's say, Mirza Kemir or Ghalib, etc. So he used to put his mind into it. He used to put his heart into it and in, the, in the translation. And it used to, you know, work really well. And some students used to teach uh, Abdul Wahid because they used to write on the blackboard, Wahid, some kap tak Wahid rohoge. Wahid, how long? Wahid means single, single. How long will you say single? And one day, basically, he was translating one poetry of Mirza Kimir. Basically, what he said was, you know, uh, in this in this verse, poet says uh, that my head should be in the lap of my my lover, and you know, her hair are you know hanging on top of my my face, and then of course there's a jam. Basically, means the, the wine or alcohol was uh, sipping from there, and then I was drinking it. One student says, "Sir, if the if the, if the, if the poet had uh, if, it's, if the man had lices in his head." Uh, if, if the lady had lices in her hair, the, uh, the teacher said, no, 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 excuse me, I was not talking about your, your uh, beloved, I was talking about the boy's beloved. So basically, because of his tragedy with this teacher, he, he had, you know, basically taught from his, from his heart. We need to sort of, you know, bring some passion. We need to have some deep interest in the topic, a subject we teach from. And in this way, you know, our teaching becomes totally, totally natural, okay? Teaching a love of learning. So when we can create a love of learning in our, our, our students, our learners, of course, this will make a big difference. We need to tell them exactly why the learning should take place, what they need to, why they need to learn, what will help them, what will create for them. Creating a learning community. Learning community, what, what MBS is doing at the moment is basically creating a learning community. We like to make sure people are aware of Islamic teaching, of you know, other teaching as well, because we have you know, volunteered uh, to teach in different ways. Uh, so of course, we are trying to create a learning community here as well. Hopefully, inshallah, this will succeed. Building study skills. This is an all sort of great way to do it. You know, we need to make sure that we are trying to create study skills. People know exactly how to study, okay, how to study properly, how will it make sense. You know, some people think, you know, skim reading is very difficult and people can hardly, hardly learn it. I was once involved with uh, Aviva. I uh, used to work with them as a financial analyst a long time ago. And my job was every week to go through a project report, project manager report, it would be 30,000 words, or 35,000 words. I had to write a summary up to 500 words completely only and su summarize and present to my, my boss to make sure the project we're looking at, the project is dead or alive. So basically after one week or so, I, I got used to skim reading. I will look for information, I'll look, look the page, whole page of text, and exactly what I'm looking for is there or not. How many people work there? What the revenues were taken? How much money was invested initially? Is the project dead or alive? So I, I will go through that information, skim reading, and learn a lot. So this was the technique of this because this I had to customize myself learning or reading so fast and, and trying to understand it. So we can bring different skills in, okay, to make sure that we build steady skills in people. Setting expectations. This is very important, people. Listen, you know, I when I start a class, okay, when I start a class, let's say the universities. I usually ask questions from my students. I ask them, do you like brands? Brands in clothes, for example, brands in watch, uh, maybe electronics, car. And they all say yes. Most people say yes, I like this brand, like that, I like that brand, you know. Okay, when, then my next question really is, if you like a brand, why do you like it? And then they start telling me about, you know, the, oh, the brand is so great, brand is so good because, you know, it has good reputation, it's got very good quality. For example, let's say we talk about BMW, which is called this you know, ultimate driving machine. BMW really are good cars, but I'm not sure, that, I'm not saying that BMW is the best car, of, but you no, know, it's a very good car. Some people who like it, they love it very much. So they will talk about, you know, how good it is, how, you know, fantastic it is, what kind of, you know, it's pleasure it gives us to drive it or use it. Similarly, when I ask them, the last question is, okay, so are you a brand? And most people say, no, 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 oh, I'm not a brand, I'm just a person. Well, are you a brand person? No, I'm not. So then I ask them really, okay, why are you not a brand person? You, why are you not a brand? Why do you not believe in yourself? You need to believe in yourself before other people can believe in you. So we need to set expectations in ourselves. We need to tell students as well, our learners, that you need, they all are brands. But they need to keep building their brand even, even better and better. So these are setting expectations. Then of course, grading fairly. When we sort of grade their marks, you know, we need to make sure that we uh, look at the criteria, what was you know, expected of them, have they sort of scored it properly, have they answered the question properly, precisely, 
was it in great detail? Was it just simple answer, basic answer? Have they gone into you know excellent way of doing it? Of course, we grade fairly, and of course, this will you know will make good impression on all students, and they all will increase your respect. Okay, guys, this one is very important as well: incorporating technology into mix. Because you know, long time ago when we learned a thing, most of you, I'm not sure. Some of you, my age, some will be a lot younger, okay? But when I was learning Japanese guys, at that time, we had no technology involved in, in, in learning. Teacher will come and write on Blackboard. Important, important point, they'll just, uh, you know, they have learned their lecture by road and just go through it and just go away. Uh, because these days, we have a new technology. Everybody, you know, people, most people, they are using to addict, they are addicted to use their phone. They have to have their phone on all the time. They need to turn their apps on, they keep looking at here and there. So we need to engage them on what they are addicted to. We need to make sure if they're addicted to their phone, we give them activities to use their phone all the time. We can create some pages on Facebook. So they can go into Facebook by excuse of going to Facebook, but they can go into their own page. The page which we are which for, the, for their learning. We can create LinkedIn groups for them. We can create uh, Twitter hashtags. We can create wikis and blogs for them. So they can still learn from it, okay? And students can have discussion there. But they still go into social media as a habit or as an addiction to go there. But of course, they learn from it. Setting social media boundaries to students. Of course, when we are lectures with students, of course, you know, in the universities where we teach, we're not even supposed to give students our phone numbers or our email addresses. It has to be only official. So these are boundaries. Okay, if someone connects with me uh, on, on, let's say, LinkedIn, some universities they allow it, some universities they won't allow it. But of course, if we are running a group, okay, as if I'm group admin or somebody else with me as a group admin and everybody else is a group member there, so of course, that's still professional because it's all, we're setting a media boundary there. Everyone complies to it, okay? Uh, design blended courses with Google Apps. So of course, the Google app, we also have Microsoft Apps as well. The Google Drive, we have OneDrive in, in Microsoft. Google Slide, we got you know Microsoft Slides, uh, Microsoft Sheets, Microsoft Forms as well, so you know, uh, this competition for between Google and uh, Microsoft has worked really well for us because we're getting everything for free. Everything is so so good, okay? Everything is online. In university these days, they use applications very well, Google Apps, and they use you know this uh, Microsoft Apps. So if you need to share something, anyone can access it. You can basically keep it open and send a link to everyone in the class in WhatsApp, for example. Everyone can access it. Everyone can see exactly what you're doing. Okay? They can see exactly the sheet, the, you know, the slide you're sharing. Even everyone can make notes there. You can ask, ask someone to answer a question for you, they'll do that. When we have group activities, you know, group activities in, in training videos, training class uh, sessions, or maybe in universities. So we can ask uh, students, let's say, to prepare one PowerPoint uh, presentation, presentation together. They can all do that. They can all play their part. One person can add some comments. Next person can add the comments. Of course, everyone can write which page number was done by who, et cetera, who was who's taking part in this activity. So guys, these are, you know, technology has to be brought in practice all the time. Design blended uh, courses to Google Apps, so we need to make sure you know that we uh, share information on Google. When somebody has to share information with us, instead of emailing us, they can share on Google Drive. They can share, you know, with us some slides and share with us. So simply you just amend, uh, you know, write your comments there, write your notes there, or give them feedback and send it back and just save it there. Simply leave it and it'll save itself. So these things can be very, very important, very helpful in teaching if we bring technology uh, you know, into our classroom. Blending with mobile phones. Guys, mobile phones, we need to make sure anything we prepare is also mobile phone friendly. Okay, it sometimes we see that you know, if you if you have some uh, let's say blog prepared as a pictures taken or some videos there, it might work really well on certain browsers, but it may not work really well into mobile phones. So we need to make sure that you know everything we prepare is also mobile phone friendly. I can work in different browsers too. Uh, playing with videos. As he says, videos play a big role, okay? I, I know that YouTube started uh, many years ago as a small you know, video sharing platform, but this, this, this day, you know, it's really, really multi-billion platform because so many people are sharing videos from YouTube and so, so many people are learning themselves. I can tell you, I learned professional photography from YouTube. I did one or two courses too, but at the same time, you know, it was my, my passion, my hobby. So I learned that from watching videos of uh, very famous photographers, learned from them the techniques of, you know, architecture, uh, photography, uh, oil photography, portrait photography. YouTube can teach a lot of things today. You know, we can definitely 
So we can save a lot of things in you know, Google. Anything you need, ask questions you there. You just simply ask Google or YouTube. You get answers you there. You know, learning has become a lot easier. When I did my master's you know, in corporate finance from this university, uh, back in, I started in 98, finished in 21, I was doing part-time. I once bought a book from library and because I was living in London, studying in Leicester, I didn't go back on time and I had to pay a 72 pound fine for books because books were late. After that, I never went back to libraries to borrow books. I only went online to, you know, download e-books or maybe, you know, go to e-libraries e e and just book, uh, borrow books from them, I read them from there. So basically this is how my habit has become since the late nineties, okay, and I'm sure if you ask students to borrow books from libraries, it'll be very little, you know, they'll, they'll do that. Or some people will not be even interested to go to libraries. So we need to work, you know, as per the current atmosphere, how people are thinking, how people's culture is these days, okay? So we need to bring technology into our, our, our teaching and training, and hopefully things will work a lot better. Encouraging active learning and critical thinking. Fostering class discussions. Our class discussions are very important. I can give you one, one a small story here. I was once uh, attending a session in Brixton. Uh, it was a private session organized by a job center plus there, and they had to give like a liability to some students there. So this was actually a two weeks, uh, video, two weeks course. In the course, uh, I had about 20 people there. About 20 people, about nine African people. And one African person was, uh, uh, he was wearing a like color cap, which you really call known as banana cap, banana republic, like that. Some guy, and he had just to in hair. He looked very smart, you know. He was well dressed, in, in, in my opinion. He looked quite hygienic, but no other black person wanted to sit next to him. And I was very confused what's going on here? Why black people don't like black people? And after the third day, when we came back, third day, you know, I asked if we want to present something. I was trying to build up their confidence. So I asked them to talk about anything at all, anything you know. We'll talk about this topic later on, employability, but today you present anything at all. Anything you'd like to talk about, you get five minutes, you have to stand up though. You can't sit there and talk, you have to stand up and talk to the group about anything. But this person, a uh, Caribbean person, he said, can I talk about music? Yes, sure. He guys, he talked about the pitch of sound, pitch of voice. He explained in such a way, even I couldn't do that. So after his presentation, everyone was so respectful to him. They got so much respect for him. Every next day when they came back, they all want to sit next to him. Because this person, know he did realize it's his, his talent. He was also a professional tailor. Okay, so basically, you know, it's just that this is how we need to make sure that we are developing critical thinking. Okay, we had discussion in class. We, discussions, you know, can uh, open up people to other, each other, okay? And, making learning active. Everyone is active learning, everyone is engaged, everyone is taking part in activities. Continually approving your teaching, okay guys? Basically, we need to make sure, you know, we don't keep teaching uh, same lessons, same examples all the time, because otherwise in our teaching, our lecturing will become totally boring. So we need to bring new materials into teaching so people can bring new stuff. If just like we talked about, you know, one Molana, he has one, uh, let's say 10 Muharram Majalis, if they read the same majalis every single year, uh, after a few years, no one will, will like to invite them because people have heard their videos, heard, heard their majalis you know, every single year, either in person or through videos or YouTube, of course, and they have to keep improving. Similarly, guys, in teaching as well, we have to keep improving our knowledge so we can pass on the new knowledge to students. Uh, conveying your knowledge, okay? Conveying your knowledge. We need really to make sure we convey the knowledge in such a way that everyone gets some, something out of it. You know, we all know that not everybody learns the same way. Some people learn differently from others, so we can't you know, treat everyone the same way. We have to treat everyone individually, okay? Of course, we uh, sometimes we are out of time, but you know, of course, we need to make sure our teaching and I know materials which, were, which are prepared are prepared in such a way that you know everyone gets something out of it. Adopting a changing to a changing environment, guys. We are going through changing environments all the time. Imagine in 2019, we had no idea that we will come into uh, online learning. Will come into blended learning. It was very little, you know, this is, but everyone has learned so much. Knows, you know, of course, everyone is doing some things from home. Things have changed. People working from home. A lot of corporations, you know, they have cut down on their, on their, on their, on their, let's say, on their budgets. They had large offices before, but now they're working into small offices because people can manage from home. So this has given them an opportunity. Okay. Similarly, we also we've gone through you know, this style. I'm sure I can see a lot of courses, though. Uh, offered by universities, online online teaching, 
online teaching by even Oxford University, Cambridge University. They're offering a lot cheaper courses where they used to ask for 50,000 pounds a year, now they're doing 18,000 pounds a year. We we'll still get a degree from the university, but it's not cheaper, it's, one, it's less than half even. So of course, we had to adapt, you know, as per our learning environment, okay? Our environment is changing. We had to change our uh, techniques as well. We had to change our ways of teaching and, and training. Connecting to the world outside of academia, guys, this is very important. Uh, if you are teaching and training, okay? It's better to sometimes uh, change the environment a little bit, call some guest speakers, okay, to talk about something, you know, we can talk to some senior models, maybe somebody else from outside and, you know, ask less students, ask some questions. I know once I was in university yeah, this, and- so, ra, ra, yeah. Ra, ra, yeah, this, this is a very good uh, suggestion. I would like to add something over here. Sure. So firstly, yeah, thank you. I think uh, the, you, you have been talking about, you know, the corporate and professional trainings and obviously that's something that should be the standard. We should be delivering our, classes and teaching mm -hmm. uh, when we're teaching in uh, madrasa classes so uh, personally i've noticed when whenever i invited uh, a speaker like a molana then children they were more attentive they were listening and you know even those who were not behaving well when they thought when they see a guest uh, or molana then they really are they're on their best behavior and also probably it's a change and they are keen to learn and hear from new people. So I would definitely uh, endorse that this is something that really works well. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Bhai. Okay, so guys, guest speakers are very important. You know, I once uh, was uh, basically uh, in last university and we had, uh, our university had invited uh, Tom Peters. Tom Peters is an author who wrote lots of books on management. And one day he was talking about management theories and I had a bad habit as students, you know, although I was exact, exactly student, but still I had to ask lots of questions. And if I didn't get my answer, I will be still, you know, it will it'll keep going in my head all the time, you know, I had to ask a question. So I asked a question from Mr. Peters. Mr. Peters, you are a book of, you have written, you have author of lots of books in of management. You are also a lecturer in top universities. I have one question, you know, as a student, because in my opinion, you know, uh, Japanese people, they follow British management theories. British people, they follow American management theories and Americans follow the Japanese management theories. So I asked him the question, uh, Mr. Peter, who should I follow? I don't like to waste the time, okay? I like to save my time and follow the right uh, culture, or right management theories. He said to me, you know, hold on, this is not easy question to answer, but I'll do my best now. I'll do my best to answer the question. He said, well, when British and American workers, when they go to work, they leave their brain at home. When he said that, everyone's class said, oh, excuse me, no, he said, oh, I'm sorry, guys, I didn't mean to offend anyone. This is reality, this is true, this, this is what happens. People, when they go A to B, they're told go to A to B, they only go A to B, they never try to go A to C. You know, let me give you an example, guys, when, let's say you go to chess schools, or you go to John Lewis, or maybe uh, House, of Fraser, House of Fraser, this kind of schools, a cashier is serving you, cashier has made a mistake on the till, and they'll, they'll press a button and a red light uh, starts you know, revolving on their the tail. A cashier comes to, uh, no, a supervisor comes to help them. A supervisor comes and walks on the floor like, you no, know, they own the floor. They have a big bunch of keys on the belt, on, their, uh, on the belt, and they'll come in. They'll put the key on the Z button and then they'll correct the mistake, but give them a dirty look as well. They know you made this mistake. When the cashier calls them second time by mistake, for example, and then even dirtier look, they'll still not teach them what to do. They'll still not correct them how to correct a mistake and they'll simply walk away. But he said, you know, when a, a Japanese worker makes a mistake, he goes to his boss, I'm so sorry, boss, I made a mistake. Okay, you made a mistake, well done. Now go and fix it. Now when this worker creates, he made a mistake, he, he fixes his own mistake. And basically this, this person has become more creative now. Can you imagine when I first came to UK, uh, you, you, I, I wanted to buy a German cars, a bar German cars, but in German cars, the idea was if you want electric windows, you pay more money. Electric doors, I uh, know, sorry, electric side mirrors, more money. Sunroof, more money. Power steering, more money. And just like Dell computer, price had gone really up. Japanese companies like Toyota and Honda and everybody, they had done lots of innovation because they have become more creative. They have brought the cars fully loaded, a lot cheaper than German cars. 
then of course German cars also have to bring the price down, otherwise they'll be out of business soon. Because this is how you know we need to set up, we need to create people, you know, they they could they can become total creative. They can start thinking about what can be done. If they make mistakes, they correct themselves, they'll learn from themselves. Excellent guys, we have a conducting service-based learning projects, user multimedia and open educational resources. Guys, if we look around it, we have a lot of uh, resources available. TED Talks, they talk about a lot of educational uh, you know, projects. Khan Academy, MIT Open Courseware, OER Commons, Open Learn, et cetera. Guys, there are lots of platforms there which we can learn from, which you can keep watching. Of course, if you'd like to look for more professional ones, uh, paid ones, then there are services like linda.com, Udemy, or these, these kind of uh, projects are there, which can you can learn a lot of skills yourself. Simply, you know, buy a course online and just pay for it. And this, these ones, which I just mentioned here on slides, they're free of charge. Uh, we have to increase student control, choices, and independence. We like to make sure students take, take, take control of their own learning. We have to explain to students that learning basically is your responsibility. As a teacher, as a, as a trainer, we, we are their facilitators. Okay, but it's their responsibility. They should not treat the learning like you know, a rented room. Like you, know, like you rent a car, for example, uh, as compared to your own, you own a car and drive, but go rent a car, you can go into bumps and you know, dumps here, there, you won't care, you, you can drive roughly. But when, it, when it's your own car, you treat it really lots of respect, you know, a lot of care. So we need to make sure we tell our students the learning is your basic responsibility. It's your own agenda, okay, it's yours. We are there only to facilitate it. Once you can convey this message, of course, then from there on, learning can become a lot more smoother. And also the slides, guys, anybody has any questions? Please feel free to let me know. Mr. May, I'm sorry I finished a bit earlier because I sped up. I thought maybe I only had half an hour. So anyone okay. any questions? Okay, no, no, no worries. So if, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask everyone. Anybody, don't be shy guys, any questions, please let me know. Yeah, Rahat Bhai, he, he is very experienced. Usually uh, it takes two, three days to deliver his uh, teacher's training sessions. I requested him to be really quick and somehow I think uh, he thought it's only 40 minutes, but although he had uh, one hour and uh, I think about 40 minutes. I apologize. Uh, no, 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 no worries. And if you have any you questions, uh, yeah. 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 Radhabai, can, can you elaborate further on learning athlete thing? Yeah, yeah. learning athlete is, as I've been earlier, basically it's, basically, it's a mindset. We need to create a mindset of people, like a habit that they have, like athletes, you know, they had to do some exercises, they had to go for a run, etc. They had to prepare themselves, you know, in many ways, mentally, psychologically and then they of course when the, when the time comes they're fully ready so we need to make sure that we uh, bring them into this mindset then we had to work that hard to achieve that okay basically uh, you know when I was in school my dad used to always uh, get very upset when I came second in school uh, when let's say I had position board for example maybe I didn't top the board I came third in board okay he said oh you can do the first as well you can even of course somehow I, I realized that was not very encouraging but of course he has set targets for me that you can do that. Learning at least are, in my opinion, when we create people's mindset, just like an athlete, athlete who wants to win the marathon, okay? And winning marathon, let's say, over 2,000 people for, let's say, 10 or 15 miles to run, isn't that easy? So they had to build up the stamina. So we had to keep engaging them, keep training them, sort of keep set up, uh, you know, engaging, uh, try to encourage them and motivate them in such a way that they think like an athlete. Now, if, if, if you can, and you can understand what athlete is supposed to do. Simply, instead of the you no know, athlete for, for sports, we create that athlete in learning. That's as simple as that. Anybody else? Regarding the, regarding the study skills, when you said uh, building study skills, what uh, skills exactly, I mean, like, uh, would you like to say, what are the skill types? Okay, study skills basically is uh, how best can we learn, okay? For example, I still remember, you know, when uh, we had one teacher, 
in school time when this teacher used to say, okay, everyone stand up, okay, answer this question, let me answer this question. And then of course people used to get very shy, some, some didn't answer questions. We had this teacher change, new teacher came and said, no, 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 don't, don't have to say anything in front of me. This is topic, just go and write answer. So he said to us, write answer in heading and subheadings. So when we spend, let's say we have 20 marks of, our, of one, one question, we're writing, writing two pages on that. We written about, let's say about 10 headings, maybe uh, three or four subheading in each of them, or maybe one, one subheading each. So we have basically covered those topics early. We can see exactly what the question was. Has this person covered other topics in heading and subheading or not? And we will not even bother reading all the text that are written there. So that was one study skill I learned at that at the time. So basically we can think of, you know, well, let's say one student, you know, he has, uh, he can't learn properly. He can't learn by reading. So we can tell them, okay, maybe watch some videos. Maybe, you know, sort of, you know, write down, the, write down what, you, what you learn. We also talk about, you know, the quantity study, uh, you know, most no checking in the class. If students can write down the questions, they can write down the keyword, that's also a way of learning. There's so many techniques, uh, say, some, uh, we can we can adopt, we can, depending on what level of teacher you're doing, who you're teaching. So if, if, if one, uh, you know, one uh, will not apply to everyone, of course, it, can, it really depends on the level of people who are learning, who are your learners. So of course, you know, more senior, we can have a different technique, but we need to create as per our, we need to customize them as per our group, as per our, our learners. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Mr. Bai, is that okay it's if I take permission to leave? If any more normal questions? Okay, um, sure. I mean, I have uh, one Don't more that. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, uh, go on, please. Which I actually, uh, it, uh, it's not covered in the presentation. It may be some other presentation. Mm -hmm. And that is about those, those learners, they have, if they have any, uh, disabilities or like uh, mental health, for example. Mm -hmm. so if 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 some learners have uh, mental health issues, uh, or if they have autism or like that, so how to, for example, deal with them? So if if this, uh, I mean, uh, is there any presentation that is covering that? Okay, so basically, no, we are not covering or... today okay. Uh, okay. as a topic. Okay. Sorry, uh, okay. sorry, okay. As a topic, uh, it's a specialized um, area. We yeah, did okay. want to cover one topic, but there was a suggestion that we yeah, have yeah, separate okay. sections for that. But if, uh, Rath, if you would like to add anything, please do. Yeah, sure. Uh, so yes, basically, uh, I'm not qualified for dyslexic learning or other, but of course, uh, I had once, once I had a student, he was doing master degree from De Montfort University. I was living in Fulham at the time, and he came to study with me, a black uh, gentleman. And I had my nieces visiting me from Canada, and basically we were in the, in the uh, they were in a separate room, you know, listening to my my teaching. So I asked the student, okay, you know, when a card goes for MOT, he says, what 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 is MOT? So explain to him what MOT is, and uh, you no know, simple thing like this. I mean, most people will know what MOT is. A degree student doesn't know what MOT was. He he never told me he was dyslexic. Neither his mother told me. But I was very patient with him. I took everything to basic level. If he didn't understand something, I went down to basic level. For example. In one group, I had one lady, I could train her she, uh, in uh, employability skills. She was uh, uh, East Hall dropout, okay? She was a uh, mother of single mother of seven kids. When I said, I want to talk about motivation, she said, what does motivation mean? I said, you, you, you said your kids were going to universities, your two daughters in university. Why are you sending them to university? She said, oh, because I don't want them to end up like me. I want them to have a better job. That's motivation. You have motivated them. So when she when we asked about teamwork, she said, I don't know what teamwork means. That's what teamwork basically means. Are you doing everything at home yourself? No, no. She said, Oh, basically, my uh, daughter does this, my son does this. And okay, in that in that case, you look like to me, you are a team manager. You're running your whole team. That's teamwork. So everyone works inside of cleaning all the house yourself, cooking everything yourself. To get your kids involved, they work like you as a team. So basically, I was very patient with the students, and you know, to my surprise. Uh, two months later, his mom, his mom came uh, with big box of chocolates. She said to me, Mr. Kazmi, this, my, student, my, my son has gone to three different teachers before. He didn't pass this, this subject, but he came with you and he learned he passed. And I really appreciate you know, what you've done for him. And then she told me, she's asked me, did you know he was dyslexic? I have no idea, but I know he was slow, but I didn't know he was dyslexic. So basically, I would say, if you had no training, I would say, take it easy, take it slow. Be patient, okay, and try to understand their issues. 
so I'm sure it works. But normally, I'm sure some students, you know, some lecturers, teachers will have proper training uh, deal with that. Hope it clarifies your question. Uh, yes. Uh, in you your in, in your presentation, mm -hmm. sorry, if you have if you have a few minutes, I, I'll just ask regarding the presentation that you have connecting to the world outside of academia. Mm -hmm. The point number two and three and five, which is the creating a corporate advisory council, service-based uh, learning projects and increase student control, choice and independence. If you, if it is possible, and if you have time, then please give a little elaboration. Okay. When we say uh, create corporate advisory council, this means you know that we uh, can get some. Uh, Organization involved, some companies involved, corporations nearby can get involved. They can get involved with our our learning and teaching. They can tell us what skill which they. Let's say you are working as dean of university. You might have connection with local local corporations, local companies. They will tell you what kind of skill set they need, so we can create courses for them, and they can hire students from you at the last semester when students are ready. That they basically, you know, government clearly knows. Uh, some top question will know what skill set is, is in demand. So they create those skill set through universities. And then when those skills are ready, when students are in the final session of the degree, they come and hire them. So we get corporations involved as, you know, as uh, advisory to us, OK? Uh, what's the next one was uh, conducting service-based learning? Creating service-based learning projects. OK. So service-based basically means that you know, when uh, we are, let's say, at work, okay? Uh, this is more, more. it's not lucky, like it doesn't really apply to schools and colleges, but no, this especially is for corporate world where uh, people are working. And then we, of course, teach them through, through working, okay? Let's say, just like on job training kind of thing, okay? When people, uh, I think uh, in UK, example of that is probably AAT uh, training, AAT technicians. So, some their lectures, their, their trainers, they will go to uh, you know the employers. They will tell them that we have trained them on these subjects, okay? And please involve them. Let's say one student has learned on, on profit and loss. So the, the mentor will go and tell the, tell the what's called it, uh, the organization where they're working. These students have learned about profit and loss. Please involve them in profit and loss. They can also learn uh, the practicality of that as well. Similarly, when a uh, lecture, uh, organization will tell you that they have been involved in this uh, skill on daily basis, we can teach them at, at uh, in university or college those skills which basically they are learning, they're finding difficulty. We can give them more idea of, let's say, theory, or maybe cover more example with that. So it's just basically it's both ways of you know sort of learning at work. And if the student is learning somewhere, let's say through AAT courses and all that, or mostly it's in corporate world where uh, through through job learning, okay. And the last one was you said about increased student control, choice, independence. Yeah? Okay, student yes. control basically is you know when students they are made responsible, they are empowered. Okay, they are empowered. This is their job. We, when we can convince, uh, let's say, a message to them, the learning basically is their responsibility, their primary responsibility. A teacher, a trainer, or mentor is basically there to facilitate. It's not their their job to to teach you, train you. You have to learn yourself. You have to ask questions yourself. In UK, the culture is like that as well. Nobody, if, if you start a job, nobody will ever teach or train you. If you want to go further, you have to learn the skills yourself. You have to ask questions yourself. You have to learn yourself. So basically, we are trying to make people in control, the students in control, that they are the one in control of their own learning. So they can ask questions if they want to send something, or they can ask, basically send emails later on, they can do some self free later on, and then, of course, they come back to the teacher and ask further questions if they have something unclear. The choices and independence, basically, so they can uh, basically as we talked about initially about the choices and consequences, every time a student makes a choice, there's a consequence next to it. So we need to make sure we explain to them uh, what kind of choice is good for them. Our student can really throw, uh, let's say, research and see that the, every choice has a consequence. Is it going towards positive consequence or negative consequence? And of course, independence of learning will be that you know, they can learn in their own pace. They can learn at home. They can learn while, you know, basically uh, driving around. Uh, I actually used to. When I did my um, MBA, uh, corporate finance, at that time, my partner was also doing her M education. So basically at that time we were uh, both working, uh, kids as well. So I used to print some notes out 
uh, let's say I had, to do, I had to do my assignment. So I had to print the notes out. And every time I'm going bus or train, I'm writing down, you know, going through and highlighting information which I have. And trying to write, highlight exactly, let's say I have assignment question number two. I've seen that in answer of something. So I can write the question, answer to question 3A, question three, uh, answer to question 4B. And then when I go home, I put them all in order. When I need to do my assignment, basically, I'm already ready. So I got everything in plan. So once I have time to write down my assignment, I go through answer which are, which are put down together in the same order. Okay, I basically have, I can learn anytime basically. I can learn on the weekend at night time. So it, there should be no really time, you know, really set time for us. When we have time, you can keep learning. This is your own independence of learning. Anything else, you know, clear, um, Say Dawson? Yes, thank you. That's okay. all. All right, Mr. Bai, thank you very much. And I think I should take- Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. No problem. Take good care, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now it's time for our break. So let's have a break for about one hour. So it's a lunch and a prayer break. So inshallah, we will resume our sessions at 2 p.m. Okay, hope that's fine with everyone. I'll keep the session running. So if you want to join five, 10 minutes before, then please do so. Mason. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, in your slide, it says that the next one is learner engagement techniques. Is it the same? Uh, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's it? changed. Yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, this so was from the previous break. Thanks for uh, Thank <laughs> thanks for pointing it out. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Thank you. Speak to you. Uh -huh.